Hi, thanks so much for joining me. We're moving into uh, building up the structure of an atom by ultimately looking at ways we model the solutions to Schrodinger's equation. Now, Schrodinger's equation requires calculus to solve. And I remember back in the day uh, solving Schrodinger's equation for hydrogen. When, when you get to atoms with many electrons, um, you start adding more repulsion, and you've got these um, opposing attractions to the nucleus, but repulsions between electrons. It gets really complicated to solve. And so we're going to look at models of the solutions so that we can understand more about the structure of atoms, because structure will help define or it dictates the function of the atom. And that's what we're all about in chemistry. All right, so let's look at Schrodinger. Schrodinger, along with many other important historical figures, Heisenberg, de Broglie, there were many involved in this. Um, he agreed, they agreed with Bohr about those quantized, discrete energy levels. That was the best of Bohr, so to speak. However, Schrodinger disagreed in the fact he would not define a fixed path for an orbit um, around a nucleus. Instead, what we're going to do, describe a region in space where there's a high probability of finding an electron. Now, we're going to look at um, some different levels of structure, um, and when we get down to the tightest level of structure of defining a region in space, unfortunately, it's called an orbital, um, sometimes called a cloud. I much prefer cloud, an electron cloud um, over an orbital. I'll often, as an analogy, talk about it as an electron playground, and um, that region in space where an electron is, you know, kind of plays and moves and has fun around the nucleus, so to speak. Um, uh, analogies are helpful, but they typically break down at some point, but I'll often use my classroom. So at a certain period, it's going to define a region in space where I have a 90% probability of finding you in my room if you're assigned to my class. But you could be up and moving about that room. You could be going to another group to work. You could be on a lab. It's just a space where you're working at that time. And I mean, you could be in the bathroom. You could be absent. You could be um, in the office. But you know, 90% of the time, you're going to be in my room, hopefully learning and learning to love to learn. And so the classroom would be that, that orbital, that region in space. Now, if we want to define a, uh, you know, the location of a particle or of anything, we typically need x, y, and z. So if we you know, want to uh, define any you know, coordinates, you know, we, we want la latitude, longitude, and ultimately altitude. So x, y, z. Um, for an electron, we get a bonus. Instead of just three coordinates, we have really a four coordinate system um, that we're going to be getting at in this series of videos. N, L, M sub L, and S. Right? And let's start with looking at N. N is called an energy level or energy cloud. So I usually do energy level, could be called an energy shell. And it's called the principal quantum number. So uh, when I looked at Bohr, Bohr's model in my videos, and you have the nucleus down here, and you have these energy levels that get closer and closer together, we're talking about N, the quantum number. Now, N indicates distance from the nucleus and its energy. Um, the higher the value of N, the further from the nucleus you would find the electron on average, and the higher the potential energy. Okay, Its energy would be less 
negative, higher on a potential energy, higher would be less negative. <clears throat> Um, the number of electrons in any, any given energy level is given by 2n squared. So in my first energy level, um, n is equal to 1. Whoops, sorry about that. n is equal to 1. 1 squared is 1 times 2. I'd have 2 electrons. For the second energy level, n is equal to 2. 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8. For the third, we have 3. 3 squared is 9, times 2 is 18. And one more, we could do, go on and on and on with this, but I'm only going to do one more. n is equal to 4, 4 squared is 16, times 2 is 32. So it's an important little formula um, to keep in mind, because that's the kind of questions you'll often be asked on assessments. Okay, so that is our first of our four quantum numbers that come out of Schrodinger's model and allow us to build up some models of our understanding of atomic structure. And man, when you get on to one of my favorite classes, physical chemistry in college, you get to delve into this deeper and get more um, exact and more precise models of atomic structure. So thanks for joining me for this part of our understanding of the atom.